There we go. So I really haven't gotten into much yet uh, with the exception of the announcement that's there in Canvas, but I wanted to go ahead and start recording this so that we'll have access to some orientation video that I can post later in Canvas so that you guys can reference if you ever lose something. Although I tend to find for myself that it's just easier to, to just click randomly into links until I figure out how the structure of a website works. So uh, we've had the internet for like 30 years now. So I think that, that most of us should be able to just like randomly click and then figure things out. But if you need an orientation video, it's gonna be there. I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen again. Okay. So this is the homepage. Again, the announcements are going to be at the top. The three most recent announcements are going to be shown. Um, on the left-hand side, I have a lot more stuff in my navigation panel, but if we switch into student view, so that's, it makes a little bit more sense. Uh, you only have a few things here. I didn't want to overwhelm you with options or things uh, to click on. Um, pretty much, we're just going to use the modules, maybe the workbook and this math world link. If you ever need to access your grades, it'll be under grades. That makes sense. Uh, if you ever need to reference the syllabus, it'll be here. Um, and it'll be in a couple of other places as well. So. Let's just pretend that I'm in student view. Uh, what you'll see on the home page is just a, a welcome message here with my contact information. Again, my name is Miguel Aguilar. Uh, I'm your instructor. This is my email address if you ever need to email me, although it'll be easier for you to just send me a message through Canvas if you know how to do that. Um, later on, I'm gonna have you guys sign up for a um, phone app that will allow us to just uh, text message each other without exchanging actual personal information like our, our personal numbers. And usually through that this app called Remind, that's the most immediate way to get into contact with me. Um, because if you have a message that you need to get to me immediately, right? Let's say it's in the middle of the day, like two o'clock, you can shoot me a text message through the Remind system and it'll go straight to my phone. Um, I'll talk more about that a little bit later. So here's my contact information. Um, if you're ever on campus, and I happen to be on campus, my office would be in the science building, uh, 108P. So that's the first floor of the science building. There's a little hall that's like a labyrinth where all the instructor's offices are. Um, you can always go to the math department office uh, and talk to the uh, office manager, Melissa, and she'll point you in the right direct direction. Or if you walk into the big computer lab in the first floor of, of the science building, that's Math World. Um, there may be a guy there named Pete Perez. He's the coordinator of Math World, and he is a very helpful uh, and knowledgeable person. He's been working at St. Philip's for a very long time, and he can point you in, in the direction of the office if you ever need to get to me. However, this is a Zoom situation. We're still in the middle of a pandemic, right? 18 months or something like that later. So I'm assuming that nobody wants to come into contact with each other if we absolutely, unless we absolutely have to. Okay. So right now, my office hours are going to be held through Zoom between 10.30 a.m. and 12.30 p.m. at this link, right? It's not the same link as our, our class sessions. It's a different link for my office hours. So if you ever need to get into contact with me, shoot me a message in Remind or Canvas, and then click on this link, and we'll figure out when we can meet, okay? Um, getting started. This suggests that we should read the syllabus first, but I want to walk us through the orientation module. The syllabus is in there. We're going to get to it. There's a lot of stuff in there. Um, let's just click on the start here button to start the orientation module. Again, if you're just joining us or you joined us a little late, I want you to uh, sort of like not minimize your window, but make them an, uh, an appropriate size so that you can sort of follow along with me in Canvas. So if you're not logged into Canvas, go ahead and log in. And then walk along with me as I take you through the orientation module. Okay, so I'm going to click on start here. Okay, well, you'll notice that, you know, start if we, we just start with the start here button from the home page. It gives you some information here that's going to be really important. Um, but alternatively, if you just went to the modules page, you could navigate this way. Okay. Um, there are certain things here that you will not be able to see because I have not published them for you to be able to view them. That's okay. Uh, you don't have to worry about this thing. You're not going to see it on your side. Uh, you, we're starting with the start here button. 
And I'm just gonna click on it again, get back to where we were, and we're gonna navigate using this, this previous and next button at the bottom of the page, okay? So this is a hybrid course. And what I mean by that is, you know that it's a remote course. The state of Texas defines a hybrid course as being split uh, at least 50 to 85% of the instruction occurs online, right? Or not in the same place where we, we have our classes. Um, modern math courses are all done online. So even if this was a face-to-face -face course, which it isn't, it's not what you signed up for, uh, this course is no different. Most of the time that you spend working on material for this class is going to be outside of our Zoom lectures. And I wanna be very clear about that. Um, you cannot just sit in on the Zoom lecture uh, with your, your Zoom tile camera off, uh, not paying attention and think that you're gonna absorb the material, right? Uh, this, you know, for presenters or for, for speakers, for your instructors, sometimes it's very draining to be talking to a wall of black tiles when all the students don't have their cameras on. So <laughs> I'm not trying to guilt trip you guys into turning your cameras on now, uh, if you are, you know, not appropriately dressed or you have a busy background, maybe you have kids running around in the background and you have yourself on mute, it, it, I'm not going to bug you to turn your cameras on. But it just makes the learning environment a little bit more uh, pleasant, a little bit more inviting, right? We're going to get to know each other throughout the course of the semester. And the only way we can is really through the, these Zoom tiles, right? Um, now, if you still insist on not having your video on, I'm not going to, again, beg you to, do, to turn it on. But what I suggest is uh, going into your Zoom settings and adding a, a smiling picture of yourself so that you see something like this. Um, where is... Like that. Okay. So before, before the summer, I had very long hair. Uh, but I cut it because I'm an avid runner and it was, it was very hot. So I had to cut the hair. All right. Okay, so the first step to beginning of the course is we're gonna go ahead and read the syllabus. Uh, I've talked a little bit about the navigation here for Canvas, uh, but I think most of you guys have said that uh, this is not your first rodeo, right? You've used Canvas before and that's great. Everything that you're gonna need to navigate is gonna be on the left-hand side and you'll be able to figure out everything if you get lost and if you get uh, stuck on anything or have difficulties just shoot me a message so let's jump into uh is the course syllabus next i just want to i just want to use the next button I, we'll get to the, the syllabus when we get there okay so math 1414 this is what you signed up for um the prerequisite for this class is that you needed a tsi score of 950 or better uh essentially that means that that either you did really well on the TSI and you made it here, or that you've completed a Math 0320, which is a developmental class, passed that with a C or higher, and now you're eligible to take this class. What that means is that you're, you basically, um, let's put it this way. This class is a pre-count track. Students that take this course are intending to pursue a STEM degree, right? Like math or engineering, okay? If you're able to take this course, if you're able to register, that means that you should already have some fundamental arithmetic skills down. And I, I, when I say arithmetic, I just mean like addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division with real numbers, that you don't really have an issue with positive and negative numbers. You don't really have an issue with decimals or fractions. Now, that might be not the case. You might struggle with fractions. That's okay. Whatever your deficiencies are at the beginning of this course, we need to make them completely known so that I know what I'm working with and I know how to best help you as I convey the material to you, okay? But our study of algebra is gonna start this semester with polynomials. It might be something that you remember hearing from high school, or if you've been out of school for a really long time, you probably just heard, uh, remember polynomials as being these really complicated things. Um, but they're really these fundamental structures in algebra that are going to allow us to do a bunch of other fancy things like solving different kinds of equations, uh, examining geometries, uh, graphing, uh, and working with other types of uh, objects called functions that are really important not only for this class, but for the classes that you're going to go on to take after this one. Okay, 
So we're going to try to develop some more of those skills so that you're, you know, you're well positioned to take pre-cal and then calculus if, you know, and, and so on and so forth. Uh, and, and then go on to pursue, pursue your four-year degree if that's, if that's in the cards for you, right? If that's what is in your plan. Again, I've said my name like three times now. My name is Miguel Aguilar. Uh, I'm going to be your instructor through the semester unless I uh, get COVID and die. Hopefully that doesn't happen. Um, uh, I'm a faculty member of the department. As you can probably imagine, I wouldn't be here speaking to you if I wasn't. Uh, and I've been with the department for about four years now. I have an interesting background, uh, educational background, in that both of my, ba my bachelor's and my master's degree uh, are in biology, okay? So I focused my undergraduate and graduate uh, education in ecology, evolution, and conservation. I was really interested in wildlife ecology um, and evolution primarily. Uh, but these fields are like so many others, they require a keen understanding of mathematics. And it, it turns out that as I was taking more and more statistical uh, analysis courses, that I became more and more obsessed with understanding how the mathematics behind the statistics work. Okay, so in my pursuit of my master's degree, I ended up getting a minor in math. And, and you know, that's, that's basically all she wrote. I've been teaching here at, at St. Philip's for a few years now, and I really enjoy it. Um, I've just sort of been seduced by mathematics, you could say. But I think that this unconventional background uh, puts me in a unique position to sort of talk to you guys about, uh, or maybe approach the math in a way that is not based in math education. It's not based in engineering necessarily, but it might have, uh, I might have a way of communicating this math stuff in a way to you that, um, you know, might make a little bit more sense, might be a little bit more real, tactile. Uh, you can feel it as opposed to just reading some theorem or some definition that's really dry and seemingly lifeless. Okay, so that being said, I look forward to engaging with you guys throughout the semester. Um, a personal note about me uh, is that I am a San Antonio native. I've lived here since I was three years old. I just turned 31. Um, I hope to be at the, in the department for, for a long, for many more years. And uh, it's, been, it's been a crazy, uh, it's been a crazy existence, especially in the past couple of years. But uh, I like to share this personal story with, with my students at the beginning of every semester, uh, just because I don't know what all of y'all's backgrounds are. Uh, I know that um, throughout the pandemic, I've, I've taught a lot of students. Some of them are, are uh, you know, returning to school after 20 years. Some of them are fresh out of high school. Some of them have three kids that are all in school, each needing, you know, one or two family computers and sharing and, and having this remote learning environment has been really difficult for a lot of people, especially when many of us probably learn better in the classroom when there's a human being, you know, standing right next to us. But um, life is full of like nonsensical challenges that we have to meet every day. And uh, the, the story that I like to tell my students at the beginning of the semester is that uh, when I was young, I was uh, in a really, <laughs> I guess like my, my, I grew up really poor. I grew up in a, in a poor neighborhood here in San Antonio called the Glen. Uh, although I never, you, I would never would have known that it was poor because I didn't really have a bad childhood. Um, my parents were parents. My dad and my mom got pregnant with my eldest brother when my dad was 14 and my mom was 16. And they were back in El Paso. That's where we're originally from. And uh, yeah, I mean, my, my dad, in order to sort of support his growing family at such a young age, as soon as he graduated from high school, he had offers to go to college, but he really couldn't because he had to, to start supporting families. So he joined the military, joined the army. And he was in the army for about eight years. Um, around 1993, we were 1994, we moved here. And uh, I was about three going on four at the time. And well, my parents' relationship was always sort of a, a difficult one. 
because when you have a relationship with somebody uh, at a very young age, a lot of the time uh, you're very immature and you know you don't know how to communicate with each other or, or maintain and sustain a relationship in a healthy way, especially when you come from a poor background. Um, and they ended up divorcing when I was really young. And this was really difficult, not only on me and my brothers, but on my mom, who at the time was completely supported by my dad's uh, you know, military check. And uh, she, at that time, you know, didn't have any skills because this was uh, the 90s. And she had been, you know, taking care of her children for several years. So she imagined herself going to, uh, as she, you know, started to notice that the relationship uh, between her and my father were falling apart, uh, she decided that it was going to be important for her to go to school so that she can start to develop skills. And she didn't know what she wanted to do with her life. Uh, she didn't know what she could be. Uh, so she just figured she would go take some classes at the local community college, actually right here at St. Phillips, and just become a secretary because all she knew how to do is take care of other people. Um, but one day in her BCIS class, which would now be called a computer science class, um, the instructor was having difficulty with the technology at the start of the class, and they called for somebody from IT to come fix the issue. Uh, IT sent a woman who walked into the classroom, and my mom remembers vividly this woman opening up the computer, taking out some parts, swapping some other parts in, and then closing it up, and the issue was resolved in a matter of, of minutes. And this was such an impressive thing for my mom to see uh, that after class, even though she was almost done with all the, the courses that she needed for her secretary program or whatever it was at the time, she walked down to her advisor's office uh, and asked to change her major to BCIS. And fast forward uh, 20, 30 years later, she is now managing a team of IT specialists with City Public Service uh, Energy. And she's been there for quite a long time, has a lucrative IT career, and, and you know, was ba basically able to build back from, from a crumbling life, a crumbling relationship, and, and do something for herself and support her kids. And, and I wouldn't be here today if that story didn't happen the way it did. And I wouldn't be here today if she didn't have that support of her advisors and that experience that she had here at St. Phillips. So uh, it's really funny the way life it turns out. Uh, but what I want you to understand from that story is that here at St. Phillips, we try to make uh, you guys feel supported. Uh, and, and there's a lot of support systems available to you guys. I'm going to constantly be uh, telling you to, to go to Math World for tutoring. I'm going to constantly be asking you to come to my office hours if you're struggling. And I want you to have some open communication, some open dialogue with me and not just sort of sit on the other side of that computer screen. Um, like if you are struggling, I know that this is a pandemic and we're not able to be in the same room as each other, but don't suffer in silence. Make sure that you reach out to me uh, with whatever way you can uh, do so early and often. And I will do my best to make sure that you are successful in this course. It's not my business to fail you guys. Uh, I want to be there and support you as best I can. At the same time, there is a certain level of accountability that you guys have to take and a, a certain level of effort and work that you guys have to put in. So as long as you're meeting me halfway and putting in that effort, I will do whatever I need to do uh, as far as like getting you the support. You need outside tutoring, one-on-one um, -on -one sessions in my office hours to make sure that if you fall, you know, get off track that we get you back on track, okay? But there are 20 of you. Okay, so be, <laughs> be mindful that um, sometimes things slip through the cracks. And that's why you have to communicate with me and be proactive about that if you feel like things are getting too stressful, okay, or that you're falling behind. Okay, I'll do my best to be watching out for you guys in the background, like by watching your grades, watching your homework progress. But uh, I have other classes that I'm also watching. So it's easy for me to sort of you know, one student here or there sort of slips through. So just make sure you're talking to me. Okay, does that make sense? 
Yes, sir. Cool. Okay. Uh, not sure if anybody has any questions about the textbook. Uh, you do not have to purchase a textbook because you have already purchased access to the ebook uh, through your tuition and fees. Okay, I'll show you how to access it a little bit later on, um, but it is going to be this textbook, Algebra and Trigonometry with Co-Requisite Support by Ron Larson. Okay, but again, I'm going to show you the link where we can access that. Uh, and as we go through material, I'll say, okay, the homework is in section P3. That's chapter P section three. And so that's how you'll be able to sort of navigate the, the text. Uh, these are the course learning outcomes. These are things that are state mandated uh, that by the end of the course, you should have accomplished or uh, been able to do. Uh, one is demonstrating understanding and knowledge of properties of functions, which include the domain and range, operations, compositions, and inverses. Uh, recognize and apply polynomial, rational, radical, exponential, and logarithmic functions and solve related equations. Apply graphing techniques, evaluate all roots and higher degree polynomials uh, and rational functions. Recognize, solve, and apply systems of linear equations using matrices. Okay, if that sounded like a bunch of mathematical mumbo jumbo, that's perfectly fine. Uh, we're going to get to it, right? As we approach new topics, new concepts, there will be vocabulary that goes along with it. Learning math is very much like learning a foreign language. You need to get the vocabulary down because otherwise you won't understand what I'm saying. And mathematics has very precise definitions for the terms that we're going to learn. Some of the terms sound like words that we use in normal life but they have a very particular meaning in mathematics. So we have to be very clear about how we communicate with each other about the mathematical concepts, okay? Again, if these words here in the course learning outcomes don't make any sense, or maybe they vaguely make sense, uh, don't worry about it, we're gonna get to it, okay? Ah, here's the syllabus, okay. Uh, let's see what I can sort of, uh, you know, brush over and what is very important. So the meeting times, I assume that you guys know the meeting times because you're here right now. Meeting times are Monday and Wednesday, 8.40 is the start time. Uh, I put 10.30 p.m. We are not going all day. I need to, <laughs> I need to edit that. Um, it's just a two-hour session, essentially, 8.40 to 10.30 uh, or an hour and 50 minutes. We're going to meet through Zoom. Uh, the Zoom link is up here in the left-hand corner, and uh, you just join the session, and here we are, okay? My contact information is here as well, as well as the homepage. Uh, here, you can also find the Zoom link for my office hours. Office hours are going to be from 10.30, so when class ends, to 12.30. I put PM again. Oh, no, PM is right, but not for this one. Okay. Uh, so... From 10.30 when class ends to noon 30, that will be the two hour block Monday through Friday when I have office hours. So you'll wanna shoot me a message before you drop into the office hours in case I'm pulled away or doing some other task outside of my office. Um, just to make sure that we, we are both gonna be there at the same time. I would hate for you to log into my office hour Zoom session and then you're waiting there and then I never show up. Okay, make sure that I understand you're gonna be meeting, okay? Uh, the textbook information is here, as well as a link to the standalone workbook. Um, this workbook has problems that we're going to be going over throughout the course of the semester. Uh, and I put a link here as well to the workbook. So if I click on this, open in a new tab. And then open a new tab you should be able to access this document here. And once it loads, this is the workbook. Uh, it has things like multiplication table, uh, factoring strategies when we start talking about factoring polynomials, factoring charts. If you need to know the prime factorizations of different numbers, these charts are really helpful in the beginning. Uh, different review information, properties of real numbers. So this might be, helpful to you, but once you get past sort of the fluff at the beginning of, of uh, 
here's some stuff on taking notes, examples of Cornell note taking. But then eventually you get to the content uh, that we're going to be working with over the course of the semester, right? We're going to be starting in the prerequisite chapter P.3, which is on polynomials, right? And so you'll find some notes here that will supplement what we're going to be discussing in class. Uh, and then some worked examples, as well as some problems here that you can work through as practice. Okay. And usually during my lectures, I have a lecture set up for you guys and I, you know, take some time where we say, okay, we're going to work on these five problems right now. I'm going to throw you guys into breakout rooms so that you can work with each other and then see what you get. And then we're going to come back to the main session and then see, you know, how those problems, how I would work those problems out. Okay. Anyway, that's the workbook. Additional materials that are necessary for this course. Um, is there anybody here that doesn't have some sort of calculator, a, at least a scientific calculator? And your phone doesn't count because you won't be able to use your phone on the tests. Okay. Is, so is there anybody that does not have a calculator? I don't, but I'm looking for uh, looking at some right now. Okay. Um, so St. Phillips has, uh, the math department has a calculator loan program that I believe, uh, you know, we paused it over the pandemic, but I believe they've, they've kicked it back up again. So you're able to check out a calculator from the St. Phillips math department. Um, this is the loan protocol. So any student taking a math course here may check out at St. Phillips, may check out a calculator for the semester. What you need is your photo ID, a copy of your student schedule, uh, and that's it. You go to the math department office um, and you let them know that you're here to, to check out a calculator, right, or borrow a calculator for the semester. Okay, and you are able to borrow it free of charge, uh, provided that you return the calculator. So, you know, if you don't have one and you don't want to purchase one, these things tend to be pretty expensive. Uh, so I wouldn't want you to incur any unnecessary fee for having to buy a calculator. Um, you can check one out. For our class, you, you know, they'll look at your schedule and say that, okay, you're taking Math 1414. We're gonna see if we have any TI 36 Pros for you to use. This is a basic scientific calculator. Later in the semester, we're, we're gonna need some graphing utilities, but there's this online resource called desmos.com that some of you may or may not be familiar with. Uh, we'll use that to graph things. And if we need to use a graphing utility on the tests, uh, then I will enable for you guys to use Desmos on the tests, okay? Um, so again, if you need to borrow a calculator, you will take your ID and a copy of your schedule to the math department office, which is in Science Building 106. It's in the very first floor, okay? Um, if you're ever trying to get access to the science building though, you have to, because of COVID protocols, there's only one entrance that you're allowed to enter into the building. And that is the, the entrance that's facing the Center for Learning Resources or the library. Now the library is currently under construction. So uh, if you look at the, um, what is that? That roundabout sort of in the middle of campus, um, the library is in front of that sort of wedged between, uh, I guess, behind that roundabout and the new culinary building. Don't know if anybody's been on that side of town in a while, but the new culinary building is very nice. Uh, other materials that you'll need, pencils, paper, notebook. Uh, for math, I highly recommend that you use at least, at least a three subject spiral if you are taking notes because one subject notebook is not nearly big enough. You're gonna be doing a lot of writing, okay? So if you're not gonna use at, at a minimum of three subject notebook, uh, then what I recommend is using a binder that you have dedicated for this class. You're gonna run through a lot of paper. You're gonna write a lot of stuff. You're gonna throw away a lot of paper because you're gonna mess up. Mistakes happen, that's part of the, part of the process. Um, Obviously, this is a remote class, so you need a computer and reliable Wi-Fi access with a webcam. 
right? The webcam is super important for when we start taking tests because we're taking tests outside of class. I'm not going to be proctoring them. They're going to be proctored using a software called Respondus Lockdown Monitor uh, or Respondus Lockdown Browser. Uh, that will require you to install onto your computer Respondus Lockdown Browser, which will basically, uh, when you're taking the test, it's going to have the camera on you. It's not going to let you uh, navigate to other websites to prevent cheating. Uh, with the exception of those websites, which I allow for Respondus to let you use. Okay, so like I can enable Desmos graphing calculator in that so that you can use that on the test, but you won't be able to navigate to other websites. Um, I was not born yesterday. I realized that math solving apps exist and they can be a useful tool if you are absolutely stuck. Um, and you can sometimes reverse engineer the solutions to problems and understand you know, where you went wrong. But if you begin relying on them as a crutch, then you're, you're getting to the academic dishonesty territory. Okay, and we don't wanna get into that territory. We don't wanna be you know, towing the line of cheating, right? Uh, because ultimately this is the first class in the line of many uh, for you to go on and pursue your mathematics or engineering degree. And if you are cheating yourself right now, uh, it's gonna be so much harder when you get to, to, to pre-cal and calculus. So don't do it. If you're struggling, that's when you reach out. You send me a message and say, hey, can we have a one-on-one -on -one session? Or you say, hey, when are the math world tutors available? Okay, and I'll point you in the right direction. Uh, another thing that you'll need for this class, you may need a printer. If you need to print any sort of handouts that I post to Canvas that, that might be helpful notes. Uh, before tests, I tend to, to create test references that you can use on the tests if you wanted to print those out. Um, you will need a scanner or some sort of scanning app. Now, if you don't have a computer scanner at home, that's fine. Uh, what I recommend and my students do every semester is download uh, for your phone, Cam Scanner. Uh, now, this is a free phone app, although every semester students will complain to me, Mr. Aguilar, this thing is trying to make me buy it, <laughs> right? That's just the nature of apps. They will advertise for you to upgrade to the premium version. You're just gonna click on the little red X or whatever the little X is and just use the free version, okay? Um, so if you don't have a scanner at home, Cam Scanner is, is what I use. I use the free version um, and, and it works really well. Essentially what you're able to do is take your cell phone, take a picture of whatever piece of paper or a set of, of papers that you need to scan it will convert them into a PDF file. But this is the tricky thing. Then you'll have to sort of email it to yourself or get it onto your computer somehow from your phone so that you can upload it to Canvas. Okay. I don't have any like step by step instructions for how to do that. I usually have Cam Scanner send the file directly to my Google Drive. And then from there, I will download it to my computer and then upload it to Canvas. Okay. But we can talk about that more if you have difficulty with cam scanner here in a bit because i have a little assignment for you guys to do um let's see one thing is super important for remote and online classes and it is that chromebooks suck <laughs> uh as far as we're concerned and what i mean by that is that chromebooks will not work with respondents lockdown browser so since we are using this this uh proctoring software to take all of our exams if you have a Chromebook, you will not be able to take exams because you will not be able to download and, and install a lockdown browser. For whatever reason, uh, Respondus does not make a version that is compatible with Chromebooks. Okay. So if you are primarily using a Google Chromebook, I know that they're cheap and uh, they're really easy to get your hands on. That's one of the, like, the benefits of getting a Chromebook, right? It's an inexpensive access to a computer. Um, but if all you have is a Chromebook, then you're going to need to find a way to borrow a computer that is not a Chromebook from somebody, uh, maybe a family member, or there are laptops that are available for rent for the semester from St. Phillips, but those are on a first come, first come, first served basis. I've lost, uh, I've lost the mastery of the English language now. Um, okay, so again. 
it, does anybody here have a Chromebook? Is anybody working in a Chromebook right now? Okay. If you are, just shoot me a message in Canvas inbox and we're gonna have to get that uh, squared away as soon as possible, okay? Hopefully within this week. I don't know how long the process takes for you to check out a computer from the school if you need to, uh, but in previous semesters, it took a long time for some of my, my past students to get access to that, that laptop. Okay. Uh, this is just a description of the course. I've already read to you guys what the outcomes are. Uh, this evaluation is just a general overview of how evaluations work in the department, but specifically, here's the breakdown of, of your grade in this course. We're going to be using a homework platform called Cengage WebAssign, okay, for all of our homework. That will count for 10% of the final grade. The average of your four test scores will be 65% of the final grade. The final exam is 20% of the final grade and attendance quizzes and discussion that will make up the remaining 5%. Okay. Um, assignments are graded automatically because you're going to be doing those in, in uh, web assign and the exams will be returned within 10 days of their due date. So once you get them submitted uh, and usually I give you guys uh, a few, maybe several days to get the tests done and turned in um but once that window closes then give me you know about a week or two to get that graded um i tend to go through your what, what i have you do after the test is i have you upload your handwritten work so that i can see what you have done where the mistakes have been made because let's say that you're working a multi-step problem and you made a, a small mistake at the very beginning of the problem and then that resulted in mistakes throughout the rest of it. But, but really, it was just that one mistake at the beginning of the problem that messed you up. Everything else looked good in terms of the process. Well, I don't want to penalize you and take away all the points for that. I want to be able to give you as much partial credit as possible. So what, when you're doing your handwritten work for your exams, I expect you to write clearly, legibly, uh, and with enough steps so that I can sort of figure out uh, what was going on in your brain? What was the process you were using to try to solve a problem, right? Because otherwise, if you didn't upload your, your handwritten work, which is required, uh, but if you didn't, I wouldn't be able to know what you were thinking or know if you were not cheating. So uh, if you do not turn in your handwritten work for tests, uh, you get a zero on the test. I don't know how you got the answers, okay? Um, the final exam grade will replace the lowest test grade. That is the way I curve your grade. And that is provided that your final exam grade is higher than one of your test grades. Uh, okay, so let's say you got a 50 on the first test because you were super nervous, but then you sort of got your, your wits about you later and you were doing fine on the other tests. Well, let's say you get a, an 85 on the final. It's gonna replace that 50, right? So you can think about it, although you don't wanna, you don't wanna bank on it, but you can think about it as though you could not take a test and that zero would be replaced by the final. Now you wouldn't want to do that because you want to prepare for every test because uh, that material will appear again on the final. Assuming that you just skipped a test entirely, uh, you would probably do poorly on that section of the final. And, and so uh, it just wouldn't bode well for you, right? So give every test your all, and then it, whatever your lowest one is, if your final is higher, it's gonna, it's gonna replace the lowest one, okay? Electronic devices in the classroom. Um, obviously, you know, we're, even though I, I can be a little long-winded, it can be a little bit boring in class, uh, I'm gonna try to make breaks in the middle of class so that we can get up and, you know, uh, get the blood flowing again. Uh, if you have your cell phone out <laughs> and you're just like, uh, you know, scrolling, doom scrolling through Instagram or something when you're supposed to be in class, like why, why even come to class? Uh, <laughs> so what, what I suggest is that you have your, your cell phone or whatever other devices that you might have around, just put them away during class session. Um, attendance. Attendance is not only going to be assessed based on uh, attendance to these Zoom lectures. 
since we're remote, and since a majority of the time that you're going to spend in this course is going to be in the WebAssign homework platform, um, I sort of am going to use uh, a combination of your attendance to the Zoom lectures and uh, the time that you spend in either Canvas or WebAssign working on homework assignments or discussions or what have you to assess whether you were present for the week. Okay. So like if you are present to the Zoom, I've had this in the past where students show up to the Zoom sessions, but they don't do any of their homework. Um, it, it boggles my mind a little bit. I don't know what you think you're going to get out of that. Uh, but if you don't do the homework, you're going to be counted as absent, right? So if you fall behind, especially leading up to the census date, so the census date is September 8th. Um, if you have not done at least 50% of the assigned homework by the census date, then you are at risk of being dropped. Uh, and basically, there's there's no arguing with me, right? If you haven't done work, you're going to get dropped from the class because it, well, ultimately, it's it's the most compassionate thing for, for me to do to you so that you don't end up destroying your GPA, right? But I assume that most of you guys are going to be cool about this, right? That you're going to show up, you're going to you know, listen when you need to, uh, you're going to do your homework and web assign and we're going to be, we're going to be all good. Okay. Uh, the last day to drop for this course and receive a withdrawal is Friday, November 12th. Okay. So the census date is always really early in the semester, Wednesday, September 8th. And basically, if you decide, you know, after the first two weeks that this course is is really complicated. Maybe you need to take a step back and and reevaluate things and take this course another semester when you feel a little bit more prepared. If you withdraw before the census date, you will not get a W on the transcript. You will not get anything on the transcript. It will be as though you didn't take the course at all, as though you never registered for it. Okay, um, and depending on how many withdrawals you have already that might be beneficial. So you wanna be very mindful of your own progress, how you think you're doing in the class leading up to the census date. Uh, but the, the very last day to drop and receive a W in the course is November the 12th. If you, for whatever reason, are failing after November the 12th and you feel like you know, you're reaching out to me and saying, hey, can I drop this course? You will not be able to. You are stuck in the class after November 12th. And that means that you either somehow pull it together and, and you know, pull off a passing grade or you just are stuck in the class and you're going to receive an F. So just be mindful of where you are in the class and when you are struggling, reach out to me, right? Because I don't want you to be in the situation where you're suffering in silence. You never say anything to me. The drop date comes and goes and then you're stuck in the course. Okay, that would be really awful for you and for me. Uh, it's not a situation that I want to see ourselves in, okay? So just make sure you're talking with me. Uh, the homework policy. Homework counts for 10% of the final grade. There are about 35 homework assignments in WebAssign, and uh, there is a late penalty. So you can turn in late work here, uh, but I will deduct five percentage points for any day that it is late uh, and the penalty caps at six days. So after six days, uh, you will get a 70 on that. Uh, I'm, I'm pretty compassionate there. I, I don't want to take any more than 30 points away from you for it being late. But if you are you know, turning in an assignment six days late or more, uh, then obviously something is going on with you in your personal life or you're having a technical issue with your technology reach out to me in whatever way you can so that we can address that. And if you need an extension, I'm a human being with a heart. Again, I'm here to support you. Uh, so if you are struggling with whatever and need an extension, ask for an extension, okay? <laughs> Am I making myself clear? <laughs> Just talk to me, I'm a human being. I, I was where you were at some point. Um, let's see. There are five tests. Uh, again, you can't use cell phones on the tests uh, and you can't use Chromebooks because they just don't work with the Respondus Lockdown Browser. 
if for whatever reason you uh, have uh, registered yourself with the disability services at, um, at St. Phillips, then you may or may not receive accommodations in a remote or online class. And usually at the beginning of the semester, the disability services people will send me a message saying, this is the list of people that have uh, accommodations for your course. And usually those accommodations uh, are things like access to more time on the test. That's really the big one uh, because of whatever testing anxiety, uh, maybe they're um, reading disabilities that make a, some students read slower and so they need that more time for the tests. So, so if you think that you might be in that category, okay, don't disclose it to me now. Uh, that, that's not something you want to disclose out loud, but, but reach out to the disability services people, the link is here, and uh, see if they can get you set up and have them send a message to me saying that this student needs these accommodations, okay? It's a very normal thing that happens every semester. Um, if you need accommodations, reach out to disability services and, and they will do what they can to get you those those uh, accommodations. Uh, the final exam, the review is here for the final exam. Don't know why you would need that at the very beginning of the semester, but basically when final exam time comes, there are a bunch of videos that the department has put together that are reviews for the final. So I'm gonna be posting those into Canvas as well as having our own final exam review when we get there um, and so that we can get prepared for that. Tutoring services, uh, very important. This information is gonna be in multiple places throughout Canvas, but Math World Coordinator, Pete Perez, Peter Perez, really cool dude. Um, these are the hours for Math World. I'll talk about Math World more here in a second. If you are on the Southwest campus or closer to the Southwest campus for whatever reason, Math Emporium is another math uh, uh, tutoring service that specializes in math tutoring. and Ms. Paula Engelbert is, is the one running the show down there. So uh, I'm not sure that they're doing face-to-face -face tutoring right now. I think that it's all remote at both Math World at the main campus and Math Emporium at the Southwest campus. So just reach out to them if you need more information on that. And I'll talk specifically about Math World here because I, I have worked extensively with the students in Math World. So, okay, brain infused tutoring. Uh, there's another tutoring service here called BrainFuse that I believe students have access to for I think a free 30 minutes of tutoring, uh, or maybe it's a free hour. I'm not really sure on that. I've heard in the past from students that it's not that good, and I always direct people to MathWorld. So I will talk more about MathWorld than I will about BrainFuse. Um, academic integrity means exercising honesty and responsible behavior while completing your coursework. So again, I've talked about cheating already. Uh, we know that we're gonna be using Respondus Lockdown Monitor to uh, proctor the exams outside of class time. Uh, examples of scholastic dishonesty include, but are not limited to, allowing somebody else to, to complete your homework or a test, right? Uh, using websites or other programs that are not allowed to complete your homework for you. Uh, attempting to use unauthorized material, information or study aids, copying, collaboration, collusion, uh, plagiarism, uh, or even uh, assist assisting somebody to commit an act of academic dishonesty. That is, if you were to be paid or pay someone to, to do their homework or take their tests for them, okay? Uh, Access to the student handbook is here if you want more on the student code of conduct. But all I, all I can say is don't cheat, okay? I will know. Students have tried to pull fast ones on me in past semesters, especially through the pandemic. But if you end up working out math problems in a way that is nowhere near what I have taught or gone over in class, and you've used some weird technique that usually I can figure out, but if I didn't cover it, I don't know how you learned it. And uh, you just need to make sure that um, you're trying to use the techniques that I teach you at the very minimum. Uh, but if you're using something like that's really strange, 
or really complicated to solve a problem, it's going to throw some red flags for me. Uh, Joshua, you have your hand up. Um, I had a question about um, using notes on a test. So I know obviously we're probably not going to be able to use notes on the test, but are we allowed to um, have like a formula of each um, each uh, subject that we study, like set up? The way good, we can... good question. Um, so I mentioned this briefly, but for the exams, I tend to make a test reference sheet with formulas for you. Um, and I let you guys use one sheet, one standard, you know, eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper for handwritten notes. But what I ask is that you don't use any written, any worked examples, like any homework problems that you've completely worked through. Mm -hmm. You can write formulas down. You can write little notes to yourself about how to use a formula. Let's say the, the quadratic equation or the quadratic formula. You could write that down and then write a note to yourself on how to use it, but no completed worked examples from the homework. Okay. And, and when I have you upload your handwritten work for the tests, I also, part of that is you're going to be scanning and uploading that handwritten notes. Cause I want to see what you wrote down to make sure that you didn't put any sort of completed worked problem from the homework. Okay. Does that make sense? Did I, did I address your question? Yeah. Cool. cool, cool. Any other questions? All right. I need to speed up a little bit. Okay, so here's the schedule uh, of topics that we're gonna cover. Uh, you can scroll through this. You can see uh, this is a 16 week course. So we got a lot to cover in that 16 weeks, but hopefully, you know, we should have about, I would say anywhere in the range of two to four homework assignments a week. So prepare yourself, uh, give yourself the time that you need to complete that stuff. Um, let's see, any additional information? Uh, we've talked about attendance. I do need to tell you guys about this uh, early alert system that we have. Throughout the semester, you might receive a notice from, from your ACES email account. So I will alert you when the early alerts go out. It's basically the system that district has us do to identify students that are at risk of failing. So if you are on the cusp of an F or a C or maybe like a D uh, and we're like, I think there's maybe two or three periods where we have early alerts. One of them is like during midterms. But if you're failing and we're coming up to midterms or you're at risk of failing, then you're gonna get a message, an automated message from ACES that says, hey, contact your instructor because you've been identified as at risk for failing and you need to set up a one-on-one -on -one session to meet with them and, and figure out how you can get back on track, okay? So just be aware that those early alerts, early alerts are coming at, at different stages in the semester, but I will let you guys know when they're coming, okay? Um, let's see. I think that all of this is stuff that you guys can read on your own. It's a lot of uh, stuff that's required for every syllabus. You probably see stuff like this on all of your courses. Uh, let's see, maybe one more thing is that at some point in the semester, we will have an assignment that seemingly has nothing to do with what we are studying in our college algebra course, although it is math related. Uh, St. Phillips has a quality enhancement plan, which requires us to sort of evaluate your quantitative reasoning skills using this, what's called a QEP assignment, quality enhancement plan. Uh, that's gonna come later, much later in the semester. I'll let you know when that assignment's gonna go out and how I'm going to distribute it to you guys. Uh, you're just gonna turn it in like a normal assignment. It's gonna be through Canvas, I believe. Um, we'll just get that knocked out. I'll give you the instruction when the time comes, get it knocked out, get it turned in, and then we should be on our way. But usually what I do with the QEP assignment to sort of incentivize students to do it is say that I will give you like five points on whatever test is, is near the QEP assignment. Right? So like five extra credit points. Um, so aside from uh, me curving the grade by replacing your lowest test grade with the final, and then at my discretion, I occasionally try to incentivize you guys to do certain things by saying that if you do this, you'll get five extra points on the test. Uh, those are the only ways that you will get extra credit. There's no other form of extra credit in this class. So just make sure that you do the, the, the work that is for your primary credit first, 
before asking for extra credit. Okay. Okay, that's the syllabus. Did anybody have any questions about the syllabus? I know that was a lot. Okay. The forms of communication that I'm going to be using are Canvas Inbox and this app called Remind 101. And we're going to go ahead and get you set up in Remind here in a second. Uh, I've already talked about attendance and participation, but there's a little bit more information here about that and the grading policy or the grading scheme. Um, it's your responsibility to keep track of the homework due dates, although occasionally you can check those announcements in Canvas to see you know, if I've listed what is due for that week. Uh, usually the due dates for the assignments are going to be posted for the end of the week, like Sunday at 11.59. If I'm feeling generous, I might you know, post the due date for uh, like 8.30 in the morning right before class or something like that. But I think it's just like easier to think about it being your homework is due Sunday by midnight, okay? Again, if you have, if you're struggling and you need an extension, don't hesitate to reach out. But also, uh, if you begin reaching out every time for every homework assignment, uh, I have, uh, I will, you know, use my discretion at deciding whether or not to give that extension. Okay. Let's get to the next thing. So usually for this page, I have a very detailed plan for how each day in the semester should go and what topics we cover for each day and for each week. Uh, I'm working on that right now. It's still in progress. So you will check back here later for that. Here's some course expectations that I believe you can read on your own. Essentially, they're pretty simple. I expect you guys to take notes in class and while you're working on your homework and while you're working with our tutors in math world, okay? Do all of your homework and web assign. If you ever are struggling on a homework assignment, a single question should not take you more than 20 minutes. If it does, I am asking you to just walk away from that question, skip it and come back later, okay? If a problem takes you more than 20 minutes, skip it, ask me for help in office hours or ask the tutors in math world for, for assistance. Review your notes outside of class. I assume that you're gonna be doing this while you're working on your homework, but I also recommend that you sort of annotate your notes so that you write the problems and interpret them in plain English. Also mark up your notes with colored pencils or pens or highlighters because it really makes things pop. If you are just scribbling a bunch of stuff down in, in black ink or blue ink or whatever it is, uh, it's easy to get lost in the weeds. So make sure that you have at least two different colors so that you can identify like what are the important structures of this problem and how is that structure changing from line to line, okay? You'll see that as I start to, to go over some lectures uh, that I like to use highlighters to identify the key parts of problems, okay? Definitely use Math World. I'll talk about that more in a second uh, and be courteous to your classmates. If you have a loud environment, in your home or wherever you're, you know, set up for your Zoom session, um, just make sure that you're, you're keeping yourself on mute. You can unmute yourself at any point to stop me and ask questions. Don't worry about it. Just, just unmute yourself. Uh, as we saw just moments ago, Joshua uh, used the raise hand feature in Zoom. You can use that. Although sometimes I'm really long winded and I don't pay attention to those hands. So if you need to just unmute yourself and say like, hey, hey, can you repeat yourself or hey, can you slow down? Uh, I will do my best to accommodate you, okay? Uh, so those are, those are uh, my expectations for you guys. What you can expect from me is that I'm gonna try to approach this content as cheerfully as possible. I think that math is super fun uh, and it doesn't have to be hard. It is hard, <laughs> but, but it can also be satisfying, okay? Another thing you can expect from me is that I will answer any question that you have about the course material without any value judgment on you or where you are in terms of your math education. I am here to help you. I'm gonna provide you with an honest assessment of your deficiencies, judgment-free, and we're gonna to try to work on developing your skills so that those deficiencies are covered, right? That you build the skills that you need so that you can be successful in this course and in future courses, okay? Because I've worked with students in calculus, Cal 1 and Cal 2, that 
they cannot work with fractions and I'm not trying to put them on blast. But uh, if you're getting to calculus two and you're struggling with fractions, dividing fractions, uh, they're, they're bigger fish to fry. You gotta have those skills on, on lock, man. Okay, so we're gonna, whatever your deficiencies are, let's clear them up here. And if you need some extra help outside of class, whether it's in math world or in my office hours, just shoot me a message, man. Uh, I will remind you daily, well, whenever we meet really, to visit early and often with the tutoring staff in math world, okay? They are a invaluable resource, truly priceless. Everyone there is a degreed professional with at least a bachelor's degree in mathematics or a math related field, okay? So they're not peer tutors, they are instructors, they are super tutors, okay? Um, this page gives you a brief overview of my weekly schedule. I teach a few courses and there's a couple more that are not listed here. Uh, we are Math 1414, obviously we're Monday and Wednesday. Uh, and then my office hours are set up here uh, between 1030 and 1230. Again, you have access to my Zoom link there for my office hours if you need to get there. Um, so just be mindful of where I'm going to be if you message me with some sort of immediate urgent thing in the middle of my uh, three o'clock class, uh, I might not get back to you until after that class lets out, okay? So just be mindful of that. That's just where I'm gonna be. Um, okay, what else? This page just goes uh, through updating your settings in Canvas. So I'm going to let you guys read this on your own and update your settings. Basically, if you're checking your ACES emails regularly, you will either daily or occasionally, maybe weekly, get these reports from Canvas saying, oh, you know, there was a message in your inbox or this assignment is due at this time. Um, and if you don't want those things to be super annoying, well, if you do want them to be super annoying, you would select to notify you right away whenever a change has been made to Canvas. But you can have them send a daily summary, so that's just once a day, or a weekly summary. Uh, I highly recommend that you do not use don't send me anything at all because you sort of need to stay in the loop. Now you could choose this if you wanted to, um, but just make sure that you're checking Canvas regularly to see what changes are, are sort of cropping up in the modules. Does anybody have any questions about that? Cool. This is a note about student privacy. We're online, guys. This is technology. Uh, hopefully, the Chinese and the Russians don't hack us and steal all our math homework. But uh, because if they did all our math homework for us, we would never be able to do our homework for ourselves. Um, that's jokes. I got plenty of them. You're going to get tired of them throughout the semester. Uh, but if you need to read the privacy policy for the Cengage Web Assign homework platform, I provided a link. Uh, at the same time, I know that you know we just tend to hit accept the terms and conditions, and so we're just we're doing what we got to do to get through this course, man. I understand it. Um, so what I want you guys to do right now is take a moment to do this technology check and expectations quiz. It's not really a quiz. I just want you to complete it. Uh, there are right and wrong answers, but I want you to go into Canvas right now. Let's take about five to 10 minutes um, and complete this. I think there's only like five questions uh, just asking you basically uh, what kind of technology you have to see, you know, make sure that we're not using Chromebooks, make sure that we understand that Respondus Lockdown Monitor does not work with Chromebooks and stuff like that. So. Uh, Excuse me, how do, I, how do I get to the page? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Let me go ahead and, well, maybe I should have kept sharing, right? Uh, what you'll do to get to this quiz is go to modules on the left-hand okay. side. Okay. And then in the orientation module, we're going to scroll down to technology check and expectations. This little rocket symbol here is, I think it's a rocket. Um, is indicative of a quiz in Canvas. So we'll just click on that. And then you should be able to see something that looks more like this. Where's the orientation module? Uh, the orientation module should be at the very top of, of the modules page. 
Is that the start here? Yeah, where it says, uh, do you not see this thing? That's the orientation module start here. Oh, well, let me go back. So click on modules. Oh, oh yeah. Yeah. Yeah, this thing is the module orientation module and it's sort of like an accordion, right? You can click on it to get everything to drop down or click on it to sort of uh, fold back up. So again, we're scrolling down in the orientation module to get to technology check and expectations. Okay. You, should, you should see a page that looks like this. Uh, there's a lot of text here, but just scroll down to the bottom and click take the quiz just so that we can get the quiz done. And when you are done, uh, if you would please use your Zoom uh, reactions to give a thumbs up. Do you guys need me to stop my sharing so that you guys can can work in peace? I mean, that bothering me. <laughs> okay. I'll me neither. I will leave it up.
I'm actually going to stop the sharing right now um, because I think it'll be easier for me to check who's completed the, the quiz that way. Are we allowed to go ahead and uh, start the discussion board or introducing ourselves? Yeah, if you want to. Okay. Um, I was actually going to say, if, if we don't get around to that today, um, then just make sure you get it done before uh, this week, you know, later on today after class. Because okay. uh, we are sort of running a little bit low on time. I know I'm long winded. This tends to happen on orientation day for me. So uh, you guys will hopefully get used to it throughout the semester. Looks like, looks like most of us are completed. Again, I think there were five questions on that thing. Uh, don't worry if you got one counted wrong. I'm just going to go back through that. And it just might be like that you spelled something wrong or it wasn't one of the options that was allowed in, in that particular question. But if you've completed the quiz, you're going to get all the points for that. So don't, don't worry about it too much. Is uh, Robert Correas here? Excuse me, how do yeah, we yeah. get to the discussions assignment? Is it in assignments or in modules? Go into modules. Um, yeah, so is, the, is there an assignment thing, like a tab available to you guys? It, it shouldn't be. No. I'm, trying, I'm trying to sort of corral you guys into the modules. So that's primarily what, where you will see and access your assignments. It should say modules. When you yeah, go so to modules, it's in the uh, orientation model. Yeah. And then there's at the bottom. So what we're gonna what we're gonna have you yeah, do. Yeah, thanks. Uh, if you are done with the technology check quiz, then the next thing that you want to do before you do the introduce yourself discussion board is the communication and announcements. Uh, communication announcements, emails, and remind one hundred and one. Because what I want you to do is sign up for remind using this link here. Uh, when you click on this, this link, it will take you to the Remind website. What you should sign up with is not your ACES email. Sign up with your cell phone number, okay? The purpose of Remind is that it's a text, it's a text alert system that will allow us to communicate immediately with each other for important things. So usually what I use Remind for to communicate with you guys is after class, uh, you know, usually we'll have a video lecture and then I'll have to process that on my end. Uh, it gets processed on my computer. Then I have to process it on YouTube and then upload it to Canvas. So that takes a couple of hours. Um, but usually I will send a text message through Remind to you guys that says, hey, the, the lecture from today is up and running so you can access it on Canvas now. Um, and then I also use it to send messages like, hey, the you have two more days to get the test completed make sure that you don't forget right 
so again, click on that link for uh, Remind and just sign up using your cell phone number. Again, I don't get access to your personal cell phone number. Uh, you don't get access to my personal cell phone number, but we're still able to text each other. Okay, well, it looks like most of us have completed that technology check quiz. Um, let me go back to modules and then share my screen with you guys. First day is always excruciatingly boring and I apologize for that, but we really just have to get this information uh, down pat so that nobody is, everybody's on the same page. Okay, uh, so, We've done the technology check and expectations. The next thing was this uh, page about announcements. I've already talked about announcements. I'll post regular announcements, usually on a weekly basis, uh, about what we covered this week and what is due at the end of the week. Canvas inbox, you can message me here, but I check it sort of like my email. Uh, I check it a few times a day so if you need to get a, a message to me immediately, you will do so using the Remind app. Again, this is an app that you will sign up with. Uh, you will have to download the Remind app on your phone so that you can text me from that app. You can also use it on the computer, but again, the purpose of Remind is so that we can have immediate com communication with each other if we need to, okay? So like uh, in the past, I've had students that, you know, they're working on their homework, let's say it's 4 p.m. or whatever, or maybe it's 5 or 6 p.m. And they shoot me a message because they're really struggling. You can send me a, a screenshot of the problem that you're working on so that I know what you're working on and say, hey, I'm having trouble with this problem. I can't figure out how to factor this polynomial so I can solve this quadratic equation. Okay, if that doesn't mean anything to you right now, those words, it will at some point. So don't worry about it. But I'm just, just an example. You'll, you'll be able to send me a message and I'll be able to get back to you as soon as possible. Okay. And once you've signed up for Remind, um, then I want you to go ahead and make sure that you comment down here because this is for a grade. 
comment down here that you understand the forms of communication. Okay. Just so that basically I have you on the hook legally. So if you ever at some other point in the semester say, oh, I didn't know how to contact the, the professor, I'll be like, got you because you typed into this thing. I understand the forms of communication. And why would you, why would you do that if you, if you, if you didn't understand? Uh, Joshua, you were saying something? I was saying on the app, type into it, um, the text. No, no, no. Uh, just type into Canvas down here in uh, the replies. Okay. So just below this box where the information is. So do you have, um, do you already have a, a code for Remind yet or? Uh, is it asking for a code? No, I, I just know that usually for classes, I think you're supposed to text a code or enter a code to get into a specific class. I can, I can, I can do a link. Um, so this link is specialized for the class, right? Like if you look at the end of this hyperlink, it says SA 1414-015. Oh, okay. That is our class. I specially set it up for us. So it won't throw you into some general class. You, you will only get messages from me through this class for things pertaining to our class. Okay, I was just asking because I, I usually just have the app on me and okay. uh, instead yeah. of just going through the link, I just wanted to know, but thanks. Yeah, you got it. Yeah, I always say this, um, that really uh, there's no such thing as a dumb question. Uh, <laughs> I'm not trying to put you on blast or anything. Uh, I, I always tell people that the only dumb questions that exist are the questions that you're not asking. Okay. So if you ever feel like timid or you feel like, oh, uh, I'll just wait. Well, you can wait till after class if you, if you feel like a little bit timid, but, but it's always better to ask, right? Don't be too self-conscious. Again, I'm here to answer your questions. Um, that's just a general statement, it had nothing to do in particular with this Remind business, but just make sure you guys get signed up. I'm gonna stop the share, jump onto Remind so I can see who among you has signed up, just briefly. Because we need to do one super important thing before we complete this. Well, I'll just have to. Here we are. People. Okay. Well, I think there are 20 of us in class. Um, one of us is absent, and 15 of us are here in Remind, so 14 of us have signed up successfully. If you are unable to sign up right now because you are on your phone or what have you, uh, otherwise having technical difficulties, make sure you get signed up for that. Um, by the end of the day is preferable. By the end of the week is absolutely necessary, so make sure you sign up for that. Uh, but we're going to go ahead and get moving on. Um, let's see this introduce yourself discussion board. I see that some of you guys have already, uh, typed your responses in here and that's great. I'm going to go ahead and type a response in, uh, after our class is done so that you know a little bit more about my, uh, struggles and my, uh, adventures in, in math, uh, as it pertains to theoretical ecology, but I'm going to jump over here. Am I even sharing my screen right now? I'm not even sharing my screen, am I? Let's go ahead and jump in here. So I'm back in the modules. Um, underneath student resources, the most important thing here are probably going to be the virtual math world uh, information and the calculator loan program. Now, I waxed poetic when I was going over the syllabus. So I'm just going to briefly talk about these. Underneath the student resources uh, little heading here, uh, there's also information on how to use Canvas, how to use Zoom, 
the student code of conduct, communicating online, academic and student support resources, tech support, right? There's a lot of resources here for you if you need uh, additional guidance and you can't get access to me. Um, so I'm just gonna ask that you read through those on your own. Um, we'll talk about MathWorld briefly, and then we'll get you set up in, in Cengage WebAssign. So MathWorld is virtual right now. We are remote. We're not doing face-to-face -face tutoring, although the computer lab I think is available for students to go use computers if you don't have access to one or, or need to go work on campus for whatever reason. Um, but what you'll do when you wanna access MathWorld is you'll click on this link here and it'll take you to the MathWorld Canvas page. Um, what I ask that you do when you visit MathWorld is that first you have attempted to work your homework problems on your own. The math world tutors are not there to work your homework for you. In fact, if you use them as a crutch in that way, you're going to be doing yourself a disservice. At the same time, there are people on their own Zoom sessions, and sometimes they have multiple students that they're working with, and they will rotate through students that are working with them. So if you are led into their waiting room, and I would say be patient, right? If they may have stepped out to go to the restroom or maybe working with another student, uh, I would wait about five minutes or so to see if they become available to you. Um, while they're explaining a, a problem to you, make sure that you're taking notes and ask questions when you need to. I highly recommend that you coordinate with your classmates somehow to join the tutoring sessions as a group because students that work together on math tend to do better in the grade, in the class. Um, ask thoughtful questions and always ask for clarification if you don't understand something. Don't just sit there in silence and politely nod your head as though you understood when you don't really understand. Ask again, okay? And when I say by ask thoughtful questions, it, it just means that you've worked on the homework problem yourself and you think like, oh, you know, I'm trying to do this thing, but it's not working out. And then they'll be able to guide you in the right direction and tell you like, hey, you're, you're thinking about this the wrong way. Let me, let me spit some game at you so that you can understand this in a different way, okay? So you'll click on the virtual math world link here and it'll take you to MathWorld. It's this Canvas page. Uh, MathWorld and Math Emporium are open Monday through Thursday from 8 a.m. in the morning to 8 p.m. at night. So even if you're working at night between the hours of 6 and 8 p.m., they are there for you. Fridays and Saturdays, again, they're open Saturdays, but Fridays and Saturdays, they close a little bit earlier. They're open from 8 in the morning to 2 p.m. in the afternoon. So just be aware of those times. What you will do is scroll down here to see this chart of all of the instructors. These are the tutors that are available. It tells you what time they are available on what days, okay? Not everybody is available on Friday. Not everybody is available on Saturday, but we do have a, a solid Saturday crew if you need to get in there on Saturday and get some help. Um, you will also look at the list of courses that they tutor for. Okay, so make sure that you are getting a tutor that is able to tutor for 1414, that is our class. So Pete Perez, coordinator of math world extraordinaire, he's able to tutor it. Yvette Niumugawa, also able to tutor this. Uh, okay, you are looking for 1414, right? So anybody here that has a 1414, you'll look at their times and their days that they're available, and then you'll click on their Zoom link, and that will take you into their waiting room, okay? Again, be patient. It may take them a few minutes to get to you if they're working with other students or if they stepped out of the room to go to the bathroom because they are human beings as well. So just make sure that you're being patient as you're waiting to be let into their room. Okay, does anybody have any questions about MathWorld? Okay, let's go back. I'm gonna talk about MathWorld all semester, guys. Um, just in the interest of time, I ask that you guys go through uh, this cam scanner assignment here. Uh, basically, cam scanner, I talked about it when, I, when we were going through the syllabus, is this phone app that you can use to take pictures of documents and upload, uh, uh, basically convert them into PDF files so that you can upload them to Canvas. So I'm going to send an announcement here after class that will tell you, you know, what I had to breeze through because I talk too much <laughs> uh, and what you need to get done, preferably by the end of today, but at the very uh, latest by the end of the week, okay? This cam scanner document, 
uh, upload is an assignment, where basically you're going to take a piece of paper, you're gonna write on the front of it, front, well, you can't see it. You're gonna write on the front page, front page, on the back page, you're gonna write back page. You're gonna use a scanning utility. It doesn't have to be Cam Scanner if you have a scan, but if you don't, then you'll wanna download this app, figure out how to use it, read these instructions, and then figure out how to upload a document to Canvas. Okay, and again, I'm gonna remind you through an announcement after class so to get that done. But the important thing that we need to finish up before I let you guys go is I need you guys to scroll down here. Oh, one, one other thing is that I need you guys to download uh, and install the Respondus Lockdown browser, which is right here. Okay, that is another thing. Install the Lockdown browser. So this is day one homework, just more orientation. And there is a Respondus Lockdown Browser quiz to make sure that you have installed it correctly and you're able to use the Lockdown Browser. It is a very, I think, a three question quiz just to make sure that you're able to get in there and use the Lockdown Browser to take a quiz. Okay. But what I need you guys to do now is to stop whatever it is you're doing, go to the orientation module, and click here where it says click here to activate your Cengage Unlimited subscription. So we will need to click this to activate the Cengage Unlimited subscription so that we can access the homework system. Uh, I believe that it should take you to uh, Cengage WebAssign or MindTap is another uh, word that is on that web page. And I think there's a one question to activate your account. So let's just take a few moments to do that. And I have no idea what it looks like on y'all's side of things. So can I get a volunteer to share their screen? I think that you guys have that ability. Yeah. Yeah, Joshua, do you think you can do it? Mm -hmm. I was logging first. Yeah. When I'm creating my account, should I be using my school email or just my personal email? Oh. Uh, I would use your school email, but if you do not check it regularly, then just use your personal email. Okay. Whatever you're going to check most regularly. Happy my birthday and it keeps it's, it's saying it, um, expand to full year. Oh yeah, so you need the four digits for the year then. Oh. Yeah, whatever the, the date format is, just make sure that you're following their date format. Still not working. No, it's not working. <laughs> um, let's see. 
Is anybody else running into any technical difficulties? We have the same problem with the birth year. Oh. You okay. just type in the year, that's it. I thought it was like your whole birthday. Oh, he's just, just asking for the year. Yeah, just 2000 or 2001, that's all. <laughs> okay. Has anybody completed that uh, activation of their Cengage Unlimited? I just completed it. Okay, cool. Um, so just uh, to test it out, because you know we only have like a minute left, um, Nicholas, if you can go back to your modules underneath that, click here to activate your Cengage Unlimited. There's an assignment called Getting Started with WebAssign. Click on that link. All right. And then click on the other link to, that'll take you to WebAssign. Okay. Uh, did it take you to an assignment with 13 questions? Uh, it's making me sign in again. Okay, yeah, yeah. Uh, it, I got a bad request. It's just showing me a bunch of script. Let me try this again. Yeah, you might want to refresh the page and see if that'll help. I was getting that message as well. I'm going to go ahead and share my screen so that you guys can see what I, what you should be seeing when you complete that. Okay. Um, okay. So when you click on this button for the getting started with WebAssign, it should open up a new tab or window. It'll load like this. And then you should see an assignment or a page that looks like this. Getting started with web assigned homework. And there are about 13 questions here. Okay, these questions are just to get you used to some of the functionalities of web assign. So you will just need to, to complete these questions to the best of your ability. If you have any difficulty with this, I would, um, Obviously, I have my office hours starting here from 10, uh, 1030 to 1230. So I'm sure that most of you guys are tired of listening to me today. It's been a long orientation day. Uh, just check back Canvas uh, announcements so that you can see what all I had to breeze through and what all I expect you guys to have done by the next time we meet on Wednesday, OK? Uh, if you have any questions and want to hang back and chat with me a bit, you're more than welcome to do that but it's already 1031, so otherwise you guys are free to go. I'll see you on Wednesday. Thank you. Yeah. You have a good afternoon. You too.